Hello, my name is Anais Querol and today I'd like to present you Lunar. This is a toolbox for more efficient, universal and updatable CKNARS and commit and proof extensions. This is joint work with Matteo Campanelli, Antonio Faonio, Dario Fiore and Adrian Rodriguez. But first let's explain what is NARC. It stands for Succinct Non-Interactive Arguments of Knowledge. And the idea is that this is a tool that will allow you to um, convince someone of a statement in a very succinct manner. Okay, so suppose, you know, suppose aliens exist and you want to convince someone about this claim, right? It's the one thing you cannot. Of course you can do, if you have this alien, you can simply show this alien, right? And then this astronaut, he will be absolutely convinced about this, right? But what is the problem about this approach is, you know, perhaps you don't want to show the alien. Perhaps the alien is some sensitive information you don't want to filter. Well, then the kind of primitive that you want to use is a zero-knowledge snark, okay? Here, you only get to learn that the claim is true. You don't even have to show any very little piece of this alien to have someone convinced about the claim. But there's an issue that these primitives have been facing for some time, which is the setup. And this is a procedure uh, whose goal is to create the keys that will be used to prove its relation. And this is executed by a third party. And I say this is a trusted setup because one needs to trust that this third party will be removing and deleting completely the randomness used to generate those keys. Because otherwise, that third party could be computing proofs for false statements, which is something we really want to avoid. But luckily, there's another type of setup, uh, which is universal. And what we mean by that is that you only need to perform a one-time setup for any bounded relation. Okay, so you can define some sizes, some, some bounds on the type of relation and, and you can have a family of relations for which the same setup will be working just fine. And the very nice addition is updatability. So in this case, even if mm, this setup is only run once for all the relations in this box, um, you can have participants in this ceremony that will participate adding randomness. So as long as there is one of these entities that is honest and is not leaking this randomness, the randomness is preserved and then no one should be able to create fake proofs. Now let's look at an unexhaustive timeline of these constructions. The first universal and updatable CK snark appeared at Crypto 18 and it had a quadratic size SRS. This is the size of the key that I was talking about. Then in CCS 19, two more candidates appeared and they were the first linear size SRS universal and updatable CK snarks. Sonic had a constant size proof and a quasi linear prover, whereas LEGO UAC in LEGO snark had a polylogarithmic proof size and a linear prover. Some months later, uh, Planck and Marlin appeared. And they were following the steps in Sonic. So they are also linear size SRS, uh, universal and updatable CK snarks. And they have constant size proof but shorter and quasi linear proof but faster. And the way they obtain these constructions is by having an information theoretic object that is like an IOP object. Um, and it is combined with polynomial commitments. We will see how this works in a minute. And then in Lunar, uh, what we are providing is a family of trade-offs of different linear size SRS universal and updatable CK snarks. We are giving them uh, more efficiency in the prover side and also the shorter proofs. And we are also giving efficient uh, commit and proof variants. Uh, so the way our compilation works is, uh, well, you start with a more general IOP-like object that uh, generalizes Plunks and Marlins. And instead of having polynomial commitments, we have uh, CP snarks and gadgets in order to obtain our constructions. Next, I'd like to give some hints about how Planck and Marlin work from a high level. 
So as I said, they both start from an information theoretic object. They are called idealized low degree particles in Planck or algebraic uh, holographic proofs in Malin. And, and they are similar because they are both interactive oracle proof flavored. So they run in rounds and in each of those rounds, uh, the prover sends some oracle polynomials and then the verifier answers with some randomness. So this object is then combined with uh, polynomial commitments in order to produce those NARCs. But this approach entails some problems and some limitations that we wanted to address in Lunar. So for instance, in Marlin, the way you would prove things like um, A times B equals C, where A, B, C are committed polynomials, would be by performing some point evaluations. But the problem here is that this uh, methodology um, requires sending one field element per each uh, committed polynomial. So this has an impact on the proof length. Another limitation here regarding Planck is that it lacks uh, zero knowledge formalization within the abstraction. And for us, it was important to encompass these notions within our, our abstraction. And in general, this holds for both of them possible optimizations that we can do on the schemes deviate from the abstraction. Whereas in Lunar, we wanted to have all of these optimizations uh, fully encompassed within our framework. Next, I'd like to explain you our information theoretic object that we call a polynomial holographic proof, a PHP. So those of you who are more familiar with ILDPs or HPs may find some similarities here. And this is because mm, this notion tries to generalize uh, Plunks and Marlins, yet including uh, some additional features that make of PHPs a more interesting notion. So because we are building preprocessing SNARKs, uh, we will have, for efficiency reasons, an, on, an offline phase uh, that will be run by the indexer uh, who will be receiving uh, the, the relation, this is just public information, and will encode it as some polynomials to which later on the verifier will have oracle access. So this is a deterministic algorithm that even the verifier could run by themselves in an offline manner. As I said, for this is done for efficiency reasons. Then during the online phase between the prover and the verifier, this interaction flows very similarly to IOPs. So in each round of interaction, the prover sends a series of um, polynomials to it again, uh, the verifier will have oracle access. And then uh, the verifier will answer with some randomness that will be used by the prover to produce other mm, polynomials in the coming rounds. So after these rounds are executed, the verifier needs to perform some checks and finally make a decision about mm, whether to accept or not mm, the prover's uh, proof. So if we look more into the PHP um, verification uh, procedure, uh, there will be two types of checks involved. One of them is um, checking some bounds on the degree of the polynomials. This is done um, well for, for completeness and soundness of the protocol. And also um, polynomial checks. And here uh, we have been using Plunk's uh, equation identities and this, together with our compilation technique, uh, allows us to uh, have a shorter um, proof length. Um, also, as a side note, I wanted to say that for us, it was very important to have a formalization, a fine-grained notion of zero knowledge at the PHP level. So here I'm explaining bounded zero knowledge. So this notion, Mm, ensures that a PHP should still be zero knowledge even after a bounded number of evaluations are filtered of the prover's oracle polynomials. So how is this possible? Well, the intuition behind this notion is that we will have to increase the degree of the oracle polynomials artificially. Okay? So just, just here, there's an example. Mm, so, for instance, if we had an unbounded number of queries and, and still the PHP would mm, remain zero knowledge, then it means that, you know, that uh, Oracle Polynomial is not filtering any information about the witness at all, okay? 
So if it was uh, related to the witness instead, this bounded uh, number of evaluations should be smaller. The next thing that I'd like to talk about are sea bees narcs. Remember our friend, this alien here? So in sea bees narcs, we are introducing the notion of a commitment. So a commitment, uh, you can see it as an envelope and you can commit to some information by putting that information inside that envelope. So relations in commit and prove snarks look as follows. They essentially have one additional input, this envelope, and relations in CP snarks hold if two things happen. One thing, the normal relation holds, and by opening this envelope, you will find the witness. So it's important to note here that this scenario is very well suited for several reasons. So first of all, this gives us um, the capability to have more modular types of proofs um, because having this envelope provides you some interoperability between different gadgets. And at the end, um, it also provides some efficiency because you can have gadgets that are very efficient for very specific uh, relations and, and you can link them together thanks to this envelope that opens to the same witness. Okay? And in our compiler, we are taking advantage of precisely these properties. Now I'm sharing with you one of our compilers. It is the SNARK compiler because we have a second one to obtain commit and prove variants of our family of SNARKs. Um, but in this case, we will be looking at how to build our updatable and universal SNARKs. So if you remember from the beginning of the slides, uh, that used to be a one-time setup that was run uh, for um, only once, for no matter how many relations we will be proving, as long as they fit within some bounds. Remember that box. So that box is precisely this uh, big N. This is the bound. And then this algorithm will output this linear size SRS. So how this is done? Well, it first runs uh, the setup of the commitment scheme with a certain degree bound. So this degree bound will determine the maximum degree of the polynomials that you can commit to. And then this produces a certain uh, key for, for making these commitments. So then um, you run these uh, key generation algorithms of two CP snarks, CPPHP and CP opening. Um, so these are two main ingredients of our compiler. One of them will prove the relation of a PHP and the other one proves um, the opening of a committed polynomial. And then on input this uh, commitment key, um, it will output some evaluation keys and verification keys, which are essentially what's inside this SRS. But why is this key updatable? Well, because this commitment key only contains monomials in the exponent. So anyone can come and update the whole randomness of the setup by adding their own, okay? Now, moving on to the derivation algorithm. This is a deterministic algorithm um, that basically takes as input the general SRS and the relation that we are going to prove and it outputs a specific, uh, specialized SRS for that particular relation. And how it is done? Well, first we commit to the polynomials that are output by the indexer of the PHP. Remember that those were an encoding of the relation and the relation is public information. And then the evaluation key is updated with the actual polynomials whereas the verification key is updated with these commitments to those polynomials. So it's important to note here that we are going to work with type-based commitment schemes, what means that depending on the type of the, of the input that the commitment is receiving, uh, the, the commitment will produce a different type of properties. So the relation type of properties means that since we're mm, committing mm, some public information, we don't need the hiding property. 
and then the somewhat hiding type of commitment that we introduce in Lunar um, is the type of commitments that we will be using uh, for those polynomials that the prover will be sending. And what does it mean is that, well, this type of commitments leak at most one evaluation at a random point. Okay, so what this means is that this type of commitments can be deterministic. And this is very important for efficiency reasons, right? So moving on, if we go to the prover now, uh, we will see that um, for each of the rounds, uh, the prover will have to commit to the polynomials, the oracle polynomials sent by the PHP prover at that round. And together with that, it will provide a proof of an opening of those polynomials, meaning that it knows uh, the content of, of those envelopes, right? Mm, so the final proof will be uh, formed by all those uh, commitments, possible messages, mm, all those opening proofs, and together with uh, proof that the PHP verifier would be accepting. And the way to make this non-interactive is by uh, running the Fiasham heuristic. Now, for the verifier, it will receive as input this um, proof um, generated by the prover and will output either yes or no, depending on, on, on the checks. So, uh, for, for the actual checks of the PHP, it will run the verification algorithm of this uh, CBSNARC Mm, receiving as input uh, some some degrees, some some equations, and the commitment to all of the oracle polynomials, including those from the indexer and those from the prover. Some of them are committed in the relation type, some others in the somewhat hiding type. And also, of course, this this proof of the PHP, and then uh, the. The verifier will run this verification algorithm inside the CPSNARC for the opening uh, together with all of the uh, oracles sent uh, by the prover, committed, and the proofs of, of opening. So uh, the result of all of this check should give the verifier either an accept or a reject. Now let's dive into the details of the blocks that make up a compiler. So these are CPSNARCs uh, for very specific relations that we can combine together. Remember here the modularity and inter interoperability of, of CPSNARCs. So there are two main ingredients here, as you've probably seen. We have one CPSNARC for proving the lots of an opening of the committed polynomial. And then we have another one uh, for proving the PHP relation. So if you can remember now what were the... Um, the steps in the verification process of a PHP, you'll then understand that this one at the same time is composed by two other um, CPSNARCs. We have one CPSNARC for proving uh, polynomial equations for committed polynomials and another one for proving um, degree bounds for committed polynomials as well. And we have a number of instantiations of all of these gadgets. So for the opening of a relation, if you're in the ACM model, just as in Marley and Planck, uh, you can have an empty proof for proving the knowledge of the opening. And here in this work, uh, we introduce a, a batting um, technique uh, to prove the opening of L committed polynomials using only one group element in the PKE assumption. Now, moving on to polynomial equations, suppose you have something like this. Then using this bad simple, uh, what we could do is just take a evaluation on a random point of these polynomials and then having a proof of evaluation of this um, A polynomial. Then you could do that once again for this polynomial B. And then what you end up with is just a linear equation for which you can have a proof of evaluation. But now it's important to note here that this gadget is leaking some evaluations of the committed polynomials and these committed polynomials will be um, oracle polynomials and very much likely related to the witness somehow. So because of this leakage we will have to take this into account in order to um, design what is the appropriate um, 
um, additional degree that we will need to provide to our oracle polynomials. Okay, we will see how these connect in a minute. And also for uh, polynomial equations, now when you only have quadratic equations, meaning they have this shape or a com linear combination of this shape, what you can end up with is just an empty proof. As long as one of those polynomials that are being multiplied is committed in G2. So the way we are using this approach in Lunar is a sort of equations where one of the terms is always a relation polynomial. So we can decide in the derivation algorithm to commit uh, to relation type of commitments in the G2 group. Okay, so why would this be empty? Well, because this would only cost one pairing to the verifier and no extra information would be needed. And then finally, we have the gadgets for the um, checking the degree bound. Uh, so depending on the um, group of the commitments, you can have one or the other. And because of the way they work, by committing to the shifted polynomial, um, this ends up being a, a polynomial check. And as long as mm, these equations are quadratic, you can also use this uh, quadratic equation gadget and then have empty proofs also for the degree checks. Now let's take a look at how all of these uh, gadgets connect with each other. So at this point, I really encourage you to pause the video for just a few seconds to really understand how these building blocks can connect to each other because the goal of this picture is to really um, get to understand what are the possible combinations that lead to all of the members of, of, of the family of, of, of trade-offs uh, that we have for all of our, our snarks in, in the lunar paper. Um, so just to give you an example, I am showing in the following slide how to, um, how to instantiate uh, the three of our constructions that we promote the most throughout our document, which are Lunar Light, uh, Lunar 1 CS Fast and Short, and Lunar 1 CS Short VK. Um, Lunar 1 CS uh, really works with the R1 CS constraint system, Whereas in Lunar Light, we are introducing a more um, efficient type of constraint system that we call R1CS Light, that only contains uh, two matrices, uh, left and right, instead of the usual left-right output in um, R1CS. So this picture is just for the interested viewer. Finally, I wanted to illustrate how all these zero-knowledge notions connect in Lunar. So remember we have this B-leaky zero-knowledge CP snark. Think of this CP egg that was filtering some evaluations. Also, we had this uh, somewhat hiding commitments uh, where, where it was allowed to be deterministic and thus mm, filtering at most one evaluation at a random point. And this together with a B plus one uh, bounded zero knowledge PHP in our compiler will give us fully zero knowledge snarks. Next in this table, I just wanted to show an overview of all the efficiency measures of the state of the art. One of our um, constructions, lunar light, but we have plenty of others, as I said. And also uh, one very recent universal undateable snark called Basilisk that was presented at crypto this year and that st uh, whose techniques stem from some uh, well techniques that we introduced in Lunar. So just to summarize uh, some of the reasons of these uh, efficiency uh, improvements is the fact that we are using these somewhat hiding commitments. Also, we didn't talk about this. Uh, a sparse masking method for polynomials. Also, the compilation with efficient CP snarks instead of just polynomial commitments. And a new constraint system that only uses two matrices, left and right, called R1CS Lite. So that was all. I hope you liked it. And 
honestly thank you for watching and see you next time bye bye